uh, hi, aviation enthusiasts. And this is an aviation uh, blurb. Uh, so anybody that's looking for anything else, <laughs> you'll be disappointed. But uh, if you're into flying and aviation, which I am all the way, uh, this is an important story. And it's a, um, a marker for the difference between uh, between automation and human error slash control. Automation is obviously the path in the future because what happened at JFK International Airport a week ago today, today is um, the 20th of January, 2023. A week ago, it was the 13th, it was a Friday, and there was an incident at JFK International up in New York that frankly, I'm surprised doesn't happen more often. Um, American Airlines 777-200, which is the long-range variant, meaning that that plane can take off from JFK and pretty much go to any any other city on the planet. Um, so, you know, every time I get on an airplane, I'm thinking that the crew is good and they know what they're doing. Well, it's not always true. Um, so on this day, uh, an American Airlines 777-200 which is a big ass airplane <laughs> and it's big and it holds a lot of fuel, uh, was cleared to a taxiway just in front of an active runway. So, you know, you're, you're the pilot of this 777 American Airlines and you're taxiing on a, on a taxiway, uh, Bravo, I believe it was taxiway B. You get to taxiway K as in Kilo, and they were supposed to take a right there and go back to uh, runway uh, four left, I think it was. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna include Juan Brown's description of this incident in the uh, in the description area below, and I highly encourage everybody to look at that because. Even though you may not be into flying, you don't know diddly squat about aviation, you're probably gonna fly somewhere sometime soon or in the recent past, sometime you're gonna fly. And so this could affect you. And it, you know, it can only help for passengers to be aware of what's going on. So the American Airlines airplane, contrary to direct instructions from the tower, crosses and, and, and creates an incursion on an active runway. Well, that is a recipe for disaster and tragedy. Uh, he, the pilot got confused, I guess, from the instructions, but it seems like the other pilots that were in the cockpit, there was a, a co-pilot and then a third extra pilot that flies, that goes along. None of them caught this in the, in the American Airlines. So meanwhile, there's a Delta 737 cleared to take off on the runway that this American Airlines airplane is uh, incursion, uh, incurring, incurring? The incursion of the American Airlines 777 onto this runway, unauthorized act, uh, access to the runway. He's crossing the runway as this Delta 737 is taking off, just starts its takeoff roll. And then you hear over, over the ATC intercom frantically telling the, uh, the 737 Delta airplane to abort the takeoff to, to prevent a collision, a T-bone collision with this American Airlines 777. And, uh, and the voice you can tell the voice from the tower is he's frantic, you know, trying to get through the, the airplane that's on the takeoff roll, which was not the airplane at fault here. It was the airplane that was encouraging, incurring onto to the, uh, onto the runway where the, where the 737 is taking off. Well, thank God, you know, the, the, the tower was paying attention to what was going on there because they averted a major catastrophe. <laughs> that airport would have been shut down for a week at least and uh, there have been a lot of people killed in that, in, in that accident. So uh, watch this 
presentation, the video by Juan Brown, you get a clearer idea. And he, and he does such a good job. He, he shows where the airplane is in the airport, where it goes to taxi. And then when it gets to the restricted runway, it's all in red. And you can tell he's crossing a, a restricted runway. How is it? I mean, I can understand, kind of understand, one person overlooking the fact that they were incursion on an active runway. But for all three pilots in the cockpit, not to know. See, if I'm the captain of any airplane, I'm telling my crew, once we push back from the gate, no more bullshitting, no more chitter chatter about anything other than our pre-flight takeoff and our directions on taxiing to the uh, runway where we're going to take off. I don't want to hear any other talk. And I, that, now, again, once you get into the air, things can relax a little bit. But when you're on the ground and you're in an airport like JFK, man, there's just tons of traffic in and out of that airport. Um, no screwing around, no talking about, you know, a good date that you had the, the night before or two nights before or, or the game or any of that bullshit. All that talk, if I'm the captain, all that talk stops as we push back from the gate. And if I hear any talk, talk about anything other than uh, getting into the air and taxing, and what the clear and, and repeat the taxi instructions out loud so everybody can hear it, and then everybody's aware. Uh oh, we're taxiing onto a restricted runway. We got to stop. That's all. Okay, okay, you missed a turn. Okay, but the, they actually in, incur were an incursion. Is incur <laughs> incurred? Is that actually a word? Incurred. They incurred. They violated <laughs> the sacred, the the sanctity and, and the sacred. Uh, restricted restrictiveness of an active runway. Um, it's a human error. So automation should eliminate that. So how would it work with automation? Well, the traffic controller, the guy in the tower, plugs in the uh, directions for taxiing to the active runway and just hits a button and the airplane starts going by itself. There's always a fly in the ointment, though. What if the uh, traffic controller enters the wrong information to tell the airplane what to do? So there, it always goes back to the human uh, participation, the human uh, uh, involvement in a process that's in, in something like you know flying in, a, in an airliner, which is uh, very dangerous uh, inherently unless there's a procedure that everyone follows to the letter. The crew of this American Airlines uh, 777 did not follow the procedures to the letter and really all they have to do is just contact the tower, stop the airplane wherever they are and say, you know, we, uh, we were distracted. Unfortunately, I apologize. Could you repeat our taxiing instructions? That's all it would have taken. Anyway, uh, check it out. Uh, I don't need, need to bring, I don't like bringing fear into anybody that's uh, enjoying the benefits of our aviation community. And we have an amazing aviation network and community in, in this country. And it's spread throughout the world. Anywhere in the world that you fly to, they're mimicking us. I guarantee it. And they're mimicking the regulations, restrictions, the guidelines, protocols, the rules, you know, governing uh, all activities of aviation in our country. Uh, can overregulation be an issue and a problem? That's a good question because I'm not so sure that you can overregulate an industry as important as aviation. You know, uh, you can, I suppose, to a point, but not at that level. Not when you've got like hundreds and hundreds of lives that are at stake. <laughs> you know. Uh, Regulation is a good thing because it, it keeps, you know, the uh, age-old uh, villains from entering into the process, such as greed, such as ambivalence, such as apathy, such as, you know, uh, nonchalant kind of uh, uh, approach and attitude towards one's uh, career. Uh, it's unacceptable in aviation. Uh, and uh, this incident is a clear illustration of how you know, apathy and ambivalence can can kill people in, in this industry. So check it out. And uh, I don't want to scare you from flying because I'll, I'll fly anytime, anywhere. It's the safest way of traveling. All you have to do is go out and drive on the highway and see what, 
nobody's doing even close to the speed limit. I mean, everybody. I'm doing 60, 65, and everybody's flying past me like I'm standing still. So that law is not enforced in our country. We're a country of laws that are not enforced, that are, uh, that are not, uh, you know, and they should be. They should be. Over 40,000 people a year die on our highways every year. Think about that. Think if we were, think if 40,000 people a year were being killed in, a, in airplane accidents. Do you think something might be done? Oh, I think so. Not with cars, though. Let just people just drive as fast and as un, uh, unsafe and as dangerously as they want to. So what? Who cares, right? <laughs> we need more regulation there. We need law enforcement there. That's for sure. It's, it's a mess. Peace, y'all.